So I'm making this video for anybody that has a yearbook company that doesn't offer plugins for InDesign for flowing the portrait shots for your yearbook. And um, I work with a company currently, yearbook company, that does not provide that. So I'm going to go over all the information you need that I gathered from the internet. I pieced it all together that I'm going to try to put it in one video so you understand what you're going to need to do that without one of, without a, pl a specialized plugin that that company provides. <clears throat> the first thing you're going to need, and I have it open right now, is you're going to need the CD that your um, portrait company, your photography company provides. And we use Live Touch, so this they do a lot of school. So this is what they provide us. They provide us with this index file, and then they provide us with um, the pictures of all the students and staff that are in these folders. I've added the seniors folder. I do have seniors in here in these folders, but these are special senior uh, photos that we actually use a better photographer for them um, because it uh, it's their final year and so they get a nicer photographer. So anyway, so here is all the information we need. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by um, the first thing we need to do is prepare the data file that we're going to use in InDesign to flow these pictures. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up um, Microsoft Excel. And I did open this earlier, this index file. So um, it's going to step us, once we open that file, since it's a text file, it's going to walk us through um, a, a wizard here because we're going to actually import the information in. And it gives us all the different um, columns of the how the, the information that's provided by the yearbook company is going to turn out like. So I'll just hit next and then finish. And so what, what had happened is um, this is a, a special number that they use, um, which is not needed. This is um, the folder that the photograph is in. This is the photograph uh, name right here for each of the students. We have their grade, and then we have the student names. Um, we have their last and their first. So all of this needs to be modified a little bit, and um, I'm going to show you what that file looks like now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File and Open. And let's see if I have it here. <clears throat> um, this is the one I'm going to open up. This is the, the mug flow here that um, has our formulas. And so what I did is I took that information in here, and then I've added a couple um, more columns here, which, uh, by the way, are really fields. And um, I moved them over. I'm sorry, actually, each row is a field. Um, the columns are, well, no, no, that, that's right, yeah. So anyway, um, that doesn't matter anyway. So what I've done is I've added their names, and then I've, I've modified some stuff. So let me show you how I did this. So what I did was this is the location of the portraits on my computer. So um, what I've done is I went ahead and in between the name of the picture and the name of the student, I added a couple columns here, and this one, what I did is I just flowed it down. I don't know if you've ever used Excel. Hopefully, you have some Excel experience that you can do this, and I flowed this whole thing down. It's just a copy all the way down throughout all the students' names, and once again, remember, this is the picture for the student that's on the right over here. Then what I did is, um, <clears throat> what I had to do is I had to get this path for these pictures are located. This is the general path where all the photos are located. And I had to modify it over here to represent the, um, to represent where the actual individual photos located for each of the students. And I had to use a formula to do this. Now, I used this column right here, D, and this column here, I added that onto it because I needed that column to, for what folder it was in. And then I had to have this column here for the name of, of the individual photo. So if, you, if I click on this, this is just a formula. okay? And notice in the formula, in the middle of the formula, I have a backslash because I do need a backslash for this to work in InDesign because it has to look on my computer 
on my Windows based computer where that file is to to associate it with that student that's to the right over here, the student name over here. So that's the formula. I'll leave that on there. And then what I did is I just flowed it down once again. I just clicked and drag and flowed that formula down. And then on my final spreadsheet, what I did is um, all the information is just, um, I converted the formulas to text. So it converts this to text. So this formula, the, um, what happens is it gets the information from here, it's the, the folder name, and then this information combines it all together. And this is the path where this person's folder is. Okay, so before I show you the final spreadsheet, what I want to also show you is um, I had to combine the two names here, the first and the last names, and then I had to change the case of the names. So um, this is a fairly easy formula you can find anywhere online. Notice that um, it's got two quotes there in a space. So it puts a space between the first and last name. And then what I did is I brought it over. Um, so what I had to do is I had to actually copy all of this and put it in Word. So I'm going to pause this video to show you how that works. Okay, so I have a blank Word document here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste special. And I'll move this over so you can see this. I'm going to paste special and I'm gonna just paste the text now I could actually do it this way instead I could click here and then that is um, the I'm sorry I think it's yeah it's this one right here that's just text only right there so I got all my names in here these are all my names the problem with this is they're in all caps and I do not want all caps in my yearbook so we have to change this so the best way to do that in Word is to Select all, so I'm going to go up to, I just hit Control A, which is select all. And um, so I have all my text selected. And then I'm going to change the case on this. So I'm going to click up here to change case. And I want to capitalize each word and have the rest of the word, uh, the rest of the name, normal case. So I click right there, and that changes my names on my um I change, changes all the names to the proper way that I want to have this. So then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to go ahead. And what I did is I went ahead and pasted it back into the spreadsheet over here. So now really the only, the only um, columns of information that I want from the spreadsheet is going to be this, this one right here with the names. It will be the grade. For my, that's for my benefit to help me. We won't actually use that. And then this right here that has the path for the photo, and that's it. So let me show you what that final spreadsheet looks like. So I'm going to pause this for a second and open that up. So here's my final spreadsheet that has the information I need. It has the, the name right here. And notice that I didn't separate the first and last name. It has the grade, and it also has the path for the photos. And notice what I named each of the fields. Um, the, the most important one is, you know, name, of course, grade. And the most important one here is the photos. And the photos has an at sign in front of it. And that's, um, and it has at photos because that's what InDesign needs to actually understand uh, what this information is going to do in it. And let me click on it real quick because I want to show you something. To get the at sign to work in Excel, you have to put a small quote in front of it or you actually type it in, or it will not take it. It'll look at the at sign as a formula or something else. I'm not sure why it, that's required, but it is. So you need to make sure and put that single quote in there and then type that in, and everything will be fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, so at this point now, your, your file is ready to go, but you need to save this as a CSV. So you would save as and go ahead and find out where you want to put it. And then you'd make sure and select a CSV, either Mac or, or PC or Windows, doesn't matter. So make it a CSV file and then save that. And I already have that file all set and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And not save that. And not save this. And not save this. Okay, so um, now here I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to my mug flows portrait flow folder and now I'm going to go ahead and pop up InDesign here and I'll go ahead and make this smaller so 
it fits in the video a little bit better. And so here we go. Um, this is the template I came up with for my mugs this year. This is what we're going to use. We're using a color in the background and so forth. And so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this just to show you what is required when you flow these uh, the photos. And the first thing that um, you need to put is a square for the photo. So you're going to need to measure out your photo and um, decide how um, you might have to do some calculations to figure out how many you want per page and so forth. And um, this is the size I used in previous years and it works. And so I'm going to just go ahead and use that size. And then I all I did then is added a text box right here. So this one's a text box and this one's a regular uh, rectangle. And so I added these two and then um, let me go ahead and show you how you get the how you get your data in, in information in there. So I'm going to bring up that panel. There is a panel for this, and it's, so you go to utilities and go to data merge. That's what it's called. And um, oops, sorry about that. Go back to tools. I'm sorry, utilities. And data merge, gosh, I'm lost here. And um, here we go. I just wanted to get rid of that little extra right there. And as you can see, I've already added the CSV file to this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the data source and show you how to get it in there. So I'm going to click on here and select the data source. I'm going to click on the little menu that's on the panel. And I'm going to go ahead and find my data source. And my data source is going to be what I did was. That file that I, I created, that CSV file, was all the students, all the staff in one file. But what I've done now is I've created, um, I split that, the, that information up and I made them their own separate CSV file. Um, notice I have two 12th grade, two senior classes because one has the good photos and one has the just the life touch photos that are okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and flow in 10th grade. So I'm going to go ahead and open that in. And notice now that I have name, grade, and photos in there. And what I need to do then at this point is I need to drag each of these fields in where I want them to go. So the name needs to go here. And I'm not going to do that because I've already done that. And it'll add another one if I do that. And then the photos just need to be up here. And you can add the photos like that. And now you're all up to date. And now you can even preview to see if the photos flow. So it does. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. And now I'm going to flow all the photos, and I can preview that when I do that. So here's I have my template. And by the way, when you do this, you want to have one box for the photos, one box for text, and no other text boxes anywhere in the document. If you do, this will not work. I found that out with trial and error. Now, I do have page numbers on this, and I do have this yearbook information down here. But I put those all in the master pages. Those are in the master pages. And um, so they will not affect my flow. Because um, if you want to add more text later on, you have to do it later on. You can't do it before you flow the, the, the mug shots. So you want to flow the portrait shots before you put any other extra text or anything like that. So I'm going to click this button down here. This is the Create Merge document. Go ahead and click on this. And um, these options should be ready to go on here. You should have multiple records. Uh, that should be available to you. That's what you want to select if it's not selected. You can even preview this because, and it'll show you. Look at that. It just flowed all those photos in for me. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to preview that just quite yet because one of the other things too, and, and this is what you might want to, you might want to preview it while you set some of these settings. It does take a while if you do that. But this tells you what the spacing is going to be between the photos and um, the rows of the photos and also the columns of photos. So you're going to have to make your adjustments, try it, maybe readjust, reflow, retry. It's barely, once, you at, once you're at this point where you have your data file and it's working good, uh, you can flow as many times as you want to. And what's cool and what works great is if you need to modify a photo, you just get into the Excel file and change um, the name of, of the JPEG that's related to that student's name. 
and then if you need to um, and then if you need to add that photo you can add that photo into the folder that that path shows you those that folder that I showed you previously so it's fairly easy once you get things going um, this is actually a fairly easy uh, task it's just once again I'm hoping this video helps you out to bypass a lot of the information that it took me a while to figure out all right so everything looks good here I'm gonna go ahead and press OK because I'm ready to flow my pictures and this will flow all my photos it does one kind of funky thing and it puts everybody on a left side page so as you can see everybody's on a left side page and that's not exactly what I want I want them to be on facing pages so the way to fix that the way I found to fix that you can close your data merge here if you want is to go to file and go to document setup and go ahead and uncheck facing pages and press OK then go back again to file to document setup and chase and click on facing pages and there you go there's your mug flow and all the names are in there now and you can zoom in double check that everybody's correct but um, as long as your data file is correct all your photos should be correct and that's all you need to do now at this point this is where I would add um, I have I think an even amount of pages two page spreads so I have one more two uh, page that would go here where I would put um, maybe um, a story and a photo a candid photo or um, um, anything that I would want to have on the side I would put there I might add something down here too but this is the time to add it you would want to wait to make sure that all your pictures are okay like double check go through them all you want to um, find any students that didn't take their picture because then that's where you'll add no photo available and a list right here and then you'd want to do all that before you finish this page off and add the photos and stuff over here because if you don't then you have to reflow and you might have to copy these this information over to the new free flow um, whichever way you feel comfortable with but this is how I'm seeing I'm gonna finish this off now I'll add another page here um, I have already gone through all the photos to find what students didn't take their pictures and I'll make that list right here and then my mug flow for this grade is completed and I'll go on to do the other grades and my staff also so that's how you flow pictures in InDesign if you have any questions you can email me um, try to contact me through YouTube have a great day